Hi, I'm Glenn from Independence Training. And I'm John with Independence Training. And we're here today at the shop of AR500 Armor, and we're going to be talking about kind of the real world application of armor and uh, how we kind of access our daily equipment while we're wearing plates. Hey, you know, a lot of people own armor. Um, they're not 100% sure how to set it up or 100% sure how to apply it to their life. So we're going to cover some of those points today. So one of the things we want to talk about is kind of practical application of armor. Like what are some real world situations? Obviously you're in the military, you understand where you're going to use armor. If you're in law enforcement, you understand where you're going to use armor. But where's the average person, you know, going to use it? And we're huge proponents of the personal oh, yeah. ownership of, of armor. And, you know, something we talk about a lot in our training. Uh, something we talk a lot about, you know, in some of the other, uh, you know, venues that we, uh, that we use, such as social media and YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got a radio show called The Arms oh, yeah. Room. And, you know, we talk about armor a lot on there. And, and a lot of it has to do with kind of trying to figure out in your life what are real-world situations where you might use it. Right. One of the most common for me that I keep a set very similar to this, this is the uh, Sentry set up by Condor. Um, I keep a set similar to this by my bed in case of the bump in the night or I have to go and get my kids after that bump in the night. So it's easy for me to get on, get off. And it's, it gives me an extra level of protection because if I have a gun and someone's coming in my house, odds are in favor of them having one as well. You know, we've seen a lot, uh, a lot of the increase, especially in more recent years, of things like home invasions and just kind of general uh, active shooter situations and things like that where, where you have the bad guy wearing armor, you know, and, and we need to have the capability to, to protect ourselves as well. The setup that I've got on is the Banshee package from Shellback Tactical, sold by AR500 Armor. It's got all the, the pouches on it and everything for your magazines. We uh, demonstrated this a little bit in the last video we did here. And, you know, where where is the application for something like this? This is the kind of thing that I would like to carry around in a vehicle. You know, I like to have this uh, in access or accessible, I mean, in a vehicle because it gives me the capability to have full protection. Uh, if I need to be moving more, you know, John talked about in a home, typically not going to have a lot of movement in a home for me in a vehicle when I'm out and about, do a lot of traveling, and, you know, sometimes we find yourself in a bad situation out on the road. It could be anything, you know, uh, think outside of the crazy zombie apocalypse kind of stuff and think more to realistic situations such as riots. Uh, obviously, there's plenty of evidence that that happens in our, in our, even in our country today. Right. Uh, natural disasters, you know, uh, even just getting stranded somewhere in your vehicle and, you know, you don't have uh, very good exit routes, you know, that might be safe for you. We live in Arizona where there's some places, you know, certain parts of our state that are a little more uh, dangerous than others. And so the capability to have access to armor is, is really critical to the average person, regardless of even, you know, what your level of training may be or, or proficiency or experience, let's say, with uh, with wearing armor. You don't have to have some kind of cool operational experience to want to own armor. And you don't necessarily have to have it for using with your firearms. Maybe you're not a fan of firearms, but you still live in some of these areas and you need a way to easily carry things and give yourself another level of protection. So that's another, that's another avenue to look at that a lot of people probably haven't thought about in the past. Absolutely. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into a little quick demonstration of how we access what we refer to as our first line gear, which is the stuff we carry around with us everywhere we go, primarily uh, in this case being a handgun and even a handgun reload if we didn't have anything available to us, such as John's sentry carrier there. And then we're going to get into some dry practice techniques, things that you can do at home to make sure that your armor is set up the right way. So when you're wearing armor, you have to make sure that you can access any other equipment you may have on your body. You know, specifically in this case, handguns that may be concealed. You know, I'm a big proponent of concealed carry, and, you know, here in Arizona we can do that. So I have to be able to access my equipment even if I have to throw my play carrier on for whatever reason. So in this case, I have a, a traditional kind of strong side carry handgun concealed underneath my shirt. And even with my armor on, because it's appropriately fitted to me and because it's appropriately set up, I can still relatively easily access my handgun and even if necessary, access my reloads. So it's really important that you make sure that your gear isn't going to get in the way of you being able to access your equipment. As you guys just saw with Glenn and his traditional, traditional strong side carry, um, the way he has his vest set up, it works for him. I carry appendix style, which is a little bit different, and the way his vest is set up, it wouldn't work. But for me, this still works just fine. I'm able to get to my handgun, I'm able to get to my magazine if I need it, and I can quickly put it away or get it out as needed. 